Hello you eight. welcome to this video where we're going to use Autodesk Inventor to create a series of buttons which can be 3D printed. So the first thing you need to do is double click on Autodesk Inventor. It's this icon over here. Just double click on it once and then let it load. Your version should say uh, Autodesk Inventor 2020. Once you've done that, it should load and look something like this. You might have two buttons on the screen that say start working and start learning. Uh, if you click on the start working button, it will take you to this screen here. The first thing you're going to do once you're on this screen is click part because we're going to start a brand new part. And once you click that, it should load up a screen that looks something like this one. Now there's a really important thing that we need to do first before we start designing anything. And that's because we're using a brand new version of Inventor for you guys. So at the top, we've got the uh, tab here that says tools. So if you click the tools tab and then document settings, it will bring up this box on the screen now. Inside this box, you need to go to the units tab and make sure the length is in millimeters. When you first load it up, it might say inches. So change it to millimeters, then you'll click apply and then close. Once you've done that, you are now ready to begin making your buttons. To do this, we're going to go back to the sketch tab at the top and we are going to start a new 2D sketch by clicking this button up here in the top left. You can then choose any of these planes. These are just surfaces we can start drawing on. I'm going to pick the XY plane. Now we've got this area here which we can start to sketch on. We're going to create a rectangle that's the right size for our button and we can use that to make sure we don't go too big or too small. So to do that we just click the rectangle tool, you then click right here in the middle where that um, little dot goes green, you then drag your mouse up to the side and click. Now you need to make sure we get off of the rectangle tool so we don't keep making loads of them otherwise if you keep clicking now you keep making a new rectangle just like that. To stop the rectangle tool, you click on the right button on your mouse, so you right click and go OK. And to delete anything, you can just drag over it with your mouse and hit the delete button on your keyboard. So we now have this rectangle, we want to make it the right size for our buttons and the maximum size is going to be 25 millimeters. To make this 25 millimeters, we're going to use the dimension uh, button at the top. So you click dimension, and then we're going to click on this top line across the top of our uh, rectangle. And we're going to make that 25 millimeters. And then you just click that tick to select it. Now at this point, it's probably going to go really big like this, disappear off the screen. To center it, we just click in this middle of this box here where it says front. We just click that and it brings it right, right there into the middle of the page for you. We're now going to do the same again on this side. We're going to set it to 25 and hit enter or you can press that tick. So this is the maximum size that our button is going to be. We'll now add some holes and then we can start working out what shape we want this to be when it's finished. So to make the holes, we're going to start off by creating a line that goes from one corner to the other corner. This is so that we've got a point in the middle of our box that we can work with. We're then going to get a little bit fancy now. We're going to change the rectangle. And if we click underneath here, where we've got this little arrow, we get lots of different options. And the one we need is the two point center. So if we click on that one, we will now be able to click in the middle of this line. So if we move the mouse along this line, as we get to the middle, that dot goes green. You'll then click, drag over to the side and click again. We are now going to use the dimension tool to set these to eight millimeters, just like we did with the first rectangle. And that creates a little square in the center, eight by eight millimeters. We're now going to use the circle tool. And we can then create a small circle on each corner of the square that we've just created. Now at the moment they're all random sizes, so we're going to use the dimension tool to set them all to two millimeters. And to do that, we click on there, on the edge of the circle, you drag your mouse to one side and click again. 
you can set the size to two and press the tick. And we do that for each one. So you click, click, and write the number two. And there we have it. So those will be our little holes that we can use to sew this button on to uh, whatever it is you're making. To get off of the dimension tool, just like with any other tool, we don't want to keep uh, making dimensions all day. You right click and then you click OK. Now, before we make this 3D, we need to get rid of a few of our lines that we've used to make this. So we're going to click on this diagonal line and delete it. And then we'll click on each of these lines from our eight millimeter square and get rid of them. We're now going to make this 3D by using the extrude tool. To do that, we first click finish sketch. That's that green tick up on the top right. We then go to the 3D model tab at the top. It's up here, top left, next to sketch. And the extrude tool is this one here. And this takes our 2D sketch and turns it into a 3D shape. So you click extrude. We then need to click on the area that we want to make 3D. And we're gonna change this number to three millimeters. And then you click OK. And what that has done now is change our shape from a 2D square into a 3D box. Now, if you want to view this from all angles, you can press this button here. And as long as you click and drag anywhere inside this circle, you can then make it uh, move around so you can see it from all sides. You can do the same using this small cube up in the top right. If you click on any corner of the cube, you can move it around. And if we wanted a square button, that would be it. That would work absolutely fine but it is a little bit boring. So I'm now gonna show you a few different ways that you can make this a little bit more unique. You don't have to do all of these, so it might be worth watching the next couple of minutes of the video and then picking which one you want to use. So let's give this a go. So at the moment we've got our uh, square, square button. We could um, start by rounding off the edges and we can do that using the fillet tool. So if we click on fillet, we can then select any side that we want to round off. So I'm gonna start by rounding off these corners. And if we change the number here, it changes the size of the curve. So at the moment it's two millimeters. If I go a bit bigger, you can see a five millimeter radius makes a larger curve. If I go for 10, then it's even more. When you want to apply one, you just click apply and then cancel. And you can see there we've got quite a nice slightly more rounded button now. If you want to remove anything you've done, you use the browser on the left hand side. So if I wanna change that fillet, I can click on it here. I can then right click and go edit feature. And that means I can then come in and change this. I could go for a five millimeter fillet and it'll change no problem at all. If you want to delete anything and try something else, just right click on it and click delete and then it goes back to what you had before. We could also try using the chamfer tool. So the chamfer, instead of rounding off the edges, kind of chops off those corners. So we could do the same again. I could click those corners. And if I change the size of the chamfer, so let's go six millimeters, we've now created something a bit more octagonal. That's quite a nice way as well. You can do that. So if we click apply, you can do that. And you don't just have to do this on the corners. You could also do this on those edges across the top. So if I wanted to continue with the chamfer, I could click these edges. Now, if you're doing these edges, the maximum number you can type in here is going to be three. And if I apply that, you can see it has now created a chamfered button. But I'm gonna show you some more ideas. So I'm gonna delete that one as well. We could also use the same idea with the fillet tool where we could start to round off these edges and changing the size of the fillet changes the curve that you've got on top. So I could go for a slightly shallower one. And if you apply this, you can see that we've now got a well-rounded button using a mixture of chamfers and fillets. If I get rid of both of those, we can try something a little bit different. Let's say we wanna create a more unique shape on our surface of our button. If we click front up here, that lines it up so we, can, we are looking at the uh, button straight on. 
You can then start a new 2D sketch by clicking the 2D sketch button, and then you can click the surface of the button. Don't forget to line it up in the middle, you can just click front and that brings it right back to the center of your page. You could, if you wanted to, go online and find an image that you want to trace the outline of. And you could put that on your button to make something really unique. So I've already found a picture off of Google, I've saved it into my documents. I can then click the image button up here and I've picked this image of a leaf. You can then open that and we can place it on the drawing. And then as always, to get out of the tool, you right click and go OK so you don't place a load of them. Now, if I zoom out using the scroll wheel of my mouse, you can see currently this image is far too big. And we can use the dimension tool in exactly the same way again to set that to 25. Now what we can do is be a little bit clever. I'm going to use the rectangle tool to trace around the outside of the shape. I'm then going to click underneath the line tool and go to spline. Spline allows us to create a really sort of a fancy curved line that we can use to trace around an item. So I'm going to trace around this leaf by clicking with my mouse and every time you click it makes a new point. The really important thing here is to make sure you line up the end of this with uh, the end that you started with because we want to make a completely joined up shape. So you can click as many times as you like. The more clicks, the more accurate it's going to be. And then you keep clicking until you've traced around the whole shape. Now you might need to zoom in and out occasionally uh, to make sure that you can always click where you want to because sometimes the uh, tool gets in the way. And it can take a long time depending on which uh, shape you're tracing. So I would recommend going for a simpler shape than what I've gone for here, because it is taking me a little while to trace around and join it all up. And then once you've done this, so I'm almost at the end of this now, you need to make sure that the end of your lines match up. And then we will be able to extrude this shape and cut it all out. There we go. What we can do now is right click and go OK. That takes us out of the uh, spline tool. And then I'm going to get rid of the picture. And then you can see the shape that I've traced out here. Now, looking at this, I might need to drag a couple of these bits just to move them away from uh, the holes for the button. And it doesn't matter if it's not exactly the same as the shape that you started with. It's still going to look quite different and quite unique. What I'm going to do now is click Finish Sketch and we're going to do an extrude to get rid of the outside area. Now what we need to do is click this one here. So you see the one with the red box that says cut. We're going to click on that one and we're going to click the outside area of our shape and then click OK. And you can see there that has left us with a really unique leaf shaped button. And you could do this with any image that you find online. And if I wanted to now, I could still go and use some of those fillets and chamfers to make something very unique. Really with you, the sky is the limit. You could do any shape you like. If you go to the sketch tools you hear, you've got the spline, circles, you can do curves using the arc tool. You can do all kinds of slots and shapes using the uh, options underneath the rectangle tool. So it's time for you to be very creative. Once you've created your button, Come back and watch the final part of the video because I'm going to show you how to save and upload your work to the submissions drive. So hopefully by now, if you're watching this part of the video, you have created your button and you've made sure that you've made it at no bigger than 25 millimeters square and you're not any thicker than three millimeters. And you should have those four holes in the middle of it so that you can sew it on to your project. What we're going to do now is save this into your documents first, and we're then going to get it ready for 3D printing so that we can then send it to our technician and you can get the parts 3D printed. So let's show you how to do that now. So to save it into your documents, we are first going to go file, and then we're going to go save as. And you should find an area in your um, documents. You should already have a technology folder. So if you haven't already, you can use this little button up here to create a new folder 
and I'm going to call it year eight tech. And if you double click on that folder, you will then be able to uh, go in and save your work. Now, so that we don't get yours mixed up with anyone else, you're gonna save your work as your name and then button. So my name is Mr. Thomas, so I'll call it Mr. Thomas button. And then once you've done that, you can click save. Now that's good. That means you've now got a copy of this saved into your user area, but we can't 3D print that yet. The next thing you're going to do is save this so that we can access it and we can 3D print it. And to do that, we need to be a little bit uh, more fancy. So we're gonna click file, and now we're gonna go down to export, and then go across to CAD format. So file, export, CAD format. We are gonna change the type to STL files, and that's the bottom one from our list here. And before we do anything else, we need to click options and make sure the units are in millimeters and the resolution is high. That means any details you've got on your uh, button are going to be there. Once you've got them in units, uh, the units in millimeters and the resolution high, just click OK. And before you save it, we are now are going to go to the work submissions drive and I'm going to show you where to save your work. So you need to click up here where it says, uh, in my case, Year 8 Tech, and that brings down this list here. And we go down to the Work Submissions Drive or the L Drive. You then go to Technology by double-clicking, and then go Submissions. And then we are in 2021 to 22, and you are Year 8. Now at the moment, we haven't set up your textiles folders. So what I'm going to do is create a new one here that says Textiles. This folder will now exist for you guys as well. You will go in here and your teacher should have already set up your class in here. So I'm going to create a new one for, this will be our test class, but you'll have one for either 8B1, 8A1, whichever class code you've got, your teacher will set that up for you. I will then go into your class. You will then save, making sure it's still called your name button and it should be a .stl. Then you click save. Once you've done that, your button is ready to be 3D printed. If you finish this really early, why don't you have a go at creating different buttons? You could also try something a little bit different. You could try, for instance, clicking and starting a new sketch, create some shapes, and you could extrude them out using the extrude tool. So you could make something now that stands out. You could put your name on it. You could put another design. The options are endless. So please make sure though, whichever button you create, you've saved it in the work submissions drive before the end of the lesson. Any questions, please ask your teacher and good luck.